Hi, this is Ida from Trisphere, and you are listening to Metal Vani, the most awesome in India. Greetings from India. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you so very much. How how is it? Um, is it very early in the in the day over at your place? Um, it's about eleven forty three p.m. Okay. So um, the new album, The Heart of the Matter, was out last week. So you know how chaotic yes. are things right now? Are you excited, nervous? You know how is the band doing amidst it all? Like you know what feedback have you been getting from? your fans and what response have you been receiving from the metal universe in general well um it's been a very ongoing progress it's been a lot of work for quite a long time so we haven't experienced any particular uh, increase in uh, stress <laughs> just the last week but but of course it's been a lot of feedback uh, finally um We've been working on this material for for quite some time, and uh, and it's fantastic to finally get the feedback. As well. It's so positive as it's been. Okay. Um, we've uh, known a few reviews in advance of the release, but of course now every day new uh, reviews are coming in, and um, friends and, and and in general fans uh, are um, finally being able to listen to it and and, uh, and um, tell us what they think. And it's been fantastic to to hear everything uh, people and, and reviews have had to say because it's been so positive. So it's. Um, it's it's been a very uh, good good days so far. Yeah. So 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 what is the feedback like? So what are your fans and what are the reviews actually saying? Uh, in general, they are saying what we ourselves have been feeling about this album that it's a much more mature uh, band. Yeah. Um, and um, in general, saying uh, what we feel is that we have become much better songwriters and musicians okay. uh, throughout the last four years. And uh, we see that, that that is reflected in the reviews and in the, the feedback from the fans. Um, and of course, uh, our previous album, The Road Less Traveled, also received very good reviews. Yeah. Uh, so we were very excited and also anxious to hear if people felt that this was not just as good as album but even mm, better better yeah yes and uh, and and of course as a band you always want to improve so uh, it's been very very nice to also read that uh, um, phrase things like wow we didn't think you could do better than robot this is really an, an <laughs> even more amazing album yeah. so um yeah, so, so it's, um, uh, um, yeah, in general, the reviews and the feedbacks are saying pretty much the same, that they they feel the songs are much better structured, uh, it's much more catchy, uh, and in general, they just really, it's a strong album from, from start to end, and it's, uh, what more can you ask? <laughs> yeah, that, and it's true, I mean, you know, no, but... Um... Like like you spoke, you know, about how it's been quite a long time since the last album. It's, yes. It's actually um, interesting that you've always maintained a four-year gap between every album. I mean, the first was out in 2006, <laughs> then was 2010, yes. now 2014. So is this a conscious, is there a conscious effort to maintain that or, you know, it just <laughs> happens that way? Ah, oh, it's it's a very thorough plan, you know. No, I'm sorry. I I, I wish I could say that it's uh, it's deliberately <laughs> waited for years. Um, but uh, no, it it's uh, it's it it is a coincidence. Um, between the first and the second album, um, I think we we in general was working to to really find. Um, the sound of, of us as a band. Uh, of course, we also had it on, on the debut album, but the debut album was uh, actually released quite fast after we had really started playing together. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so uh, we want to do, we've, we've always spent the time we feel necessary to make the songs that we like and make the songs as good as we want them to be. Um, and uh, of course we, uh, we would of course have loved to release an album much faster, but um, it, it seems that this is just the time we need. Yeah, so, um, you know, it's definitely... <laughs> um, but also, of course, we could have just shoot in one thing. Uh, I also have to mention that between The Road, Less Traveled and this one, we've also done three European tours. And, uh, and a lot of other festivals and gigs. So, of course, that has been an element too. You know, so it, it's like four years is definitely not a short period of time. So, you know, like what takes you guys this long? What is like the basic, you know, album writing process for you people? Uh, well, it's... Um, uh, as I have <laughs> just shot in here, um, of course, um, a part of... The process between two releases uh, is definitely the touring because uh, to go out and promote the album you have yes. with, with tours and gigs um, is um, it, it for us we have to um, keep focus on on that part isolated you might say uh, meaning that we we're not very good at working on new material at the same time as we're working on planning tours and going out and promoting the album and the band. Um, but um, I would say in general, we are, we've never been a band that goes into a rehearsal room, rehearsal room and just whip up a song from out of our sleeve and that's it. Um, we work a lot on details, um, arrangements, melody lines. Uh, we have uh, elements of, of strings and keyboards and piano and all these uh, different elements. Uh, well, uh, it, we we spend time to make sure that we are that we feel that this is the this is just the right combination and arrangement and that all the parts fit the way we want them to. Um, some songs uh, are finished quite fast, but other songs take take a lot of time. And um, well, yeah. I, I guess we're a bit slow. <laughs> <laughs> But when pace is something that kind of depends from band to band, like putting in detail is probably a very important thing for you people, which is why it takes four years. So <laughs> yes, I, I I have to just uh, make a, a conclusion on that. We're we're <laughs> a bit obsessed on the details, so it it takes a bit time. <laughs> yeah. Um. So the next album is that going to be like four years from now? Too? Is that going to be like? Should we just assume that the next one will be 2018? <laughs> Uh, um, I, I really hope not. Um, <laughs> uh, we, we, uh, almost everyone is saying that, okay, so is this going to be another four years now? But uh, we, uh, we will really try to, to be faster. Um, <laughs> but, um, but again, we will, we, we will never release anything before we feel that it this is something we completely um can uh, uh, yeah. it's a bit norwegian english now but completely stand for um uh, and uh, but but we do have there is a lot of of uh, guitar riffs and sections of songs uh that we didn't use on uh in in the making of the heart of the matter so okay. we have uh we have some material already to work further on with but um let, let's see how fast it goes but um it we definitely see uh, the value in releasing the fourth album uh, a bit faster than in four years <laughs> <laughs> okay um yeah. so when I listened to this album, the thing mm. that stood out for me were how you guys magically managed to, you know, amalgamate a very modern sounding metal to a very traditional classical metal, you know. And um, the oh. whole concept is, it's just so dis it's not just distinct, but it's also very brilliantly conceived as well. Is this how you pictured the band and the album to sound like when you created the band back in 2004? Uh, first of all, I must say thank you very much. It's uh, that's a fantastic uh, description you you give. <laughs> and it's uh, 
it, it's uh, it's always amazing to hear how how people perceive the music and, and that's it's um the so, so thank you very much is, the pleasure is really mine <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> um well um the the thing is that we we all we are all influenced by very many different kind of music um mm -hmm. but at the same time we are very much focused on our own music okay. um uh, so we don't when we, when we start writing we don't we never have the thought that okay this should sound like this or that it's just the songs develop how we feel natural to create riffs put the arrangements together the melody lines okay. um so it's um um well we all of us have um big fans of, of both mod modern metal bands and and classical metal bands from the 80s yes. and 70s and and everything and i think we in general are inspired by um a lot of different genres not only metal and rock but uh in general just good music mm -hmm. um uh, and I think uh, since we don't, how shall I put it, since we don't put any rules on us okay. for how a song should be made or how it should sound, I think that's perhaps um, why uh, we get this uh, this combination of something classic and something modern and uh, and it, yeah, influences from not only metal but more rock and other stuff as well. Um, personally, um, uh, I'm, I have been singing a lot of uh, Whitesnake and Ronnie James Dio, so of course mm -hmm. the, the classic uh, heavy rock vocal lines uh, are, uh, have been through my head a lot <laughs> over <laughs> okay. the years. Uh, at the same time, as, uh, I've, um, uh, I always feel that the, the guitar riffs and the arrangements that Marius, the composer, makes um they just they 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 come they come so naturally many of them of course some vocal lines i'm struggling with for months <laughs> but um uh, but i think it's it's all a very natural process uh it's probably a hopeless answer but it's uh, things just <laughs> fall a bit natural into place when we work with the the different parts and elements of a song so um i think it's just that we we only think about making the music that we like the way we like it to sound and not think any rules of how it should be sounding. Maybe that's the reason. <laughs> uh, if that's an answer at all. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, um, you know, does this album stand any personal meaning and experience with you or, you know, anyone from the band? What does the entire album mean to you personally? Um, well, if um, if I should talk more general, of course, all uh, every album uh, has uh, it's been so tremendous much work behind them that they they mean a lot to us. Just the the album and the music itself. Um, when it comes to the music, uh, we've picked the album title, and I hope I'm actually answering your your question now. But we picked the album title uh, because it reflects on both uh, the music, the the way we felt the actual music on this album turned out. Mm -hmm. That it's the heart, uh, the heart of the matter is like it. You know, it's an expression of of the core, core, the essence of something. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we really feel that music on this album is uh, the, the the essence of our si sound of Trisphere. Um, yeah. It's stripped down to what it what it what it's all about for us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, uh, and at the same time, also the the lyrics um, are also. Uh, uh, we, I, I noticed that all the lyrics were revolving around uh, what I uh, see as maybe the heart of the matter in all our lives, which I see yeah. is love <laughs> yeah. in some yeah. form. And um, uh, then I'm not thinking about the traditional, stereotypical, romantic love between two persons, but uh, love as the um, immensely powerful emotion that it is and the role it plays in our, all our, our lives uh, 
as a motivator, uh, as something that um, guides you, but also the, the darker counterpoints in that it can uh, delude you, uh, misguide mm -hmm. you, ultimately yeah. destroy you. So yeah. Um, yeah. love as the catalyst between all the things we do, the decisions we make. So that's the, um, the overall um, meaning of, uh, you might say, the music and um, uh, and the and the lyrics and uh, of course the lyrics are again based on things that I experience and feel and see and read and hear. So yeah, mm. um, I, you know I all the album names for you know Triosphere have been very intriguing. You know you know it makes yeah. you think, it makes you feel, it makes you recall emotions and experiences, and uh, that's that's a really great thing that you know you bring and now knowing the story of what comes through from the band makes a bigger difference but, fantastic uh, <laughs> tell us how you and marius formed the band back in the day yes um and we it, it it's it's beginning to be so many years ago that it's not really funny to say <laughs> the year anymore uh, but um, uh, we met in 2004 Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, coincidence had it that uh, he and I uh, ended up in a, a, a thrash metal project. We didn't know each other from before, but uh, there was this one drummer who knew him and he knew me and we just by accident uh, fell into the same project, you might say. Okay. Um, and uh, we... Uh, I really loved the way he played. He uh, thankfully liked the way I sung <laughs> because I was just sing I was just singing that uh, in that project, and um, uh, we figured out that we wanted to uh, to um, to test a few of our songs of our own that we had separately, and uh, then we discovered that we we really loved each other's musical ideas and decided that we just, we had to start a, a proper band together. Mm. Um, so I actually it was uh, quite fast from uh, the first meeting in that thrash metal project until we decided that we had to start our own band. Um, and uh, then I um, drew in uh, the drummer Arjan, who's been with us until recently, yeah. um, and just started rehearsing um, a lot, <laughs> <laughs> um, play, playing for hours and hours and hours and hours, and um, uh, figuring out uh, uh, all musical, um, um, what should I say? Um, oh, um, I'm struggling for finding the English word. What is it? Uh, the, the the common musical yeah. ground. Yes, yeah. identifying that, um, and uh, we just completely hit it off immediately. Um, and uh, well, so th th that's the that's the rough beginning. We made yeah, actually, uh, because Marius had uh, a couple of songs of his own uh, already at the time I met him for the first time. Um, and that's actually uh, uh, two, two of the songs uh, are on the Onwards album, so they, they, they were sticking <laughs> to the album as well. Um, and I had one, which is also uh, on the Onwards album. So uh, I think after, uh, let's see, uh, a week after we met, we brought in the drummer. And I think just a week after that, we actually went into the studio and made a demo of those three songs. Um, so, so it went really fast in the beginning because we just, yeah, we knew this is, uh, yeah, th this was something else. Uh, we've all played in a lot of bands, but this was something else. The chemistry and um, and the sound uh, was definitely different, definitely something else. Yeah, um, I need to ask, when did the bass come into picture? Ah, well, that that was, um, uh, well, I have been playing bass since I was, uh, or bass guitar, bass guitar, yes, <laughs> uh, since I was 16, so I've always been playing that, so um, at uh, the same moment as me and Marius decided that we should start a band, it was um, also clear that I would be also a bass player in addition to a singer, 
So, so the bay, that has been my role all along. It was just a very few projects where I didn't play the guitar or the bass at the same time as I sang. So, all right. it's always been. So, um, like you mentioned, the new album saw the departure of your drummer. Now, you did manage to find a new one to fit into his shoes. What was the yes. re- reason behind this? And was it hard to work on the new material with a sudden change? Um, I heard that Kenneth was one of your session drummers before he went full time. Ah, no, uh, um, let's see. Uh, the thing is, uh, Orion did uh, finish the, the drums for the album and he did record them. So he is playing on the album. Okay. Uh, we have, have, however, had live uh, two other live drummers since 2011 because uh, already at that point Orion was starting to have difficulties joining us on tours, etc. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we we have had two different uh, session drummers, uh, and they were both auditioning for. Um, no, sorry, just one. Yeah, and I have to think now. Let's mm-hmm. see. Um, yeah, we were auditioning several other drummers when it was finally clear that Orion would not be able to to uh, come okay. back to the band full time. Okay. Uh, and then uh, Kenneth, he uh, came in uh, um, after the drums were recorded and, and everything. And um, well, uh, to just uh, answer that question shortly, um, uh, he we we've played with uh, with uh, uh, with several very very good drummers uh, as session drummers and uh, etc. Uh, but it was always something that wasn't quite clicking. Uh, mm-hmm. We've, like I've explained about the beginning of Tristers, just this the very unique just chemistry yeah. that made this band so unique. So, so uh, that uh, we were worried for a while that we would find a drummer that was good, but we wouldn't get that chemistry back in the band. And mm-hmm. that was the thing that was so amazing when uh, we, uh, through Facebook, uh, found Kenneth. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and uh, because he, we had written that we needed a new drummer, uh, feel free to send us an, uh, an audition uh, on our email uh, address, and he did, and we we flew him up here to uh, Trondheim, okay. and uh, tested him out in the rehearsal room to f- get the feel of both him as a drummer and as a person, it, and it was and the same immediate click. Um, we we could hardly believe it. it was it was just like we've been playing together always. So oh. um, that that tran- transition could not have been better. Mm. So um, we're really really relieved. Um, but all that also being said, of course, uh, since Orion started to slip away, uh, slip away. That sounds a bit hard, but it started to fall a bit out of the band already in 2011. That has also, of course, been. Um, a challenging uh, aspect yeah. in the writing of the album uh, mm-hmm. because we were breaking up piece by piece and um, the reason I think it's just uh, of course it, it takes a lot of time and priorities uh, to uh, to to try build a band on a more or less professional level and uh, for him it reached a point where he decided that he uh, he didn't. Um, he felt he was holding us back, uh, okay. and uh, and so it was um, a natural development uh, for him, at least, that um, uh, it was time for him to leave the drummer's chair over to someone else. So it wasn't. Uh, it was without drama and uh, and without uh, hard feelings. Yeah. Um, but it was. We've been playing together for so long, so we. It was. Um, yeah, it was uh, very sad, but uh, like I said, thankfully we really we really found uh, a super uh, replacement. Yeah, and that that's important also. Yes, yeah. in this. So, um, keeping this aside for a bit, uh, let's yeah. talk a little about um, women in metal. It's not very common, yeah. um, and it's still sometimes a very skeptical notion. But, you know, you still maintained your standard of work by being the talented vocalist, the guitarist and the bassist that you are. <laughs> but yeah. do you think that it's still harder for, for a woman than a man to pierce into the metal scene? 
Um, uh, I really, in, in the beginning when I started playing in bands, um, first and foremost I have to say that uh, um, I've never felt that any of the guys I've been playing with have I've never felt that I had to prove anything extra to them. Okay. Uh, and and it, we've always been uh, uh, co-band members within the band. Everybody, everyone equally respects each other and, and, uh, uh, and expects an equal amount of each other. Okay. Uh, so, um, so within the band, uh, I've never felt that I was anything less, so to speak, because I was okay. a girl. Uh, but of course, um, uh, in the beginning, I had I have I've had to prove myself to the audience. Yeah. Um, I remember in the very beginning of Trisphere when we started to play live, uh, there was uh, one uh, live preview that started with saying that yeah, and the next band was Trisphere, and I saw this girl coming out and with a bass. Oh my God, this is going to be so humiliating. Oh um, but thankfully, then he changed and said that. But after listening to this, I understood that this was no bullshit. This was the real deal. So, so I know uh, that. Uh, of course, I think there are um, a lot of. Um, a lot of people, of course, will be have prejudice against uh, female singers and and guitar players and bassists. But I do have the impression that they are becoming more and more normal uh, with women in metal. Um, and I today I don't feel that I am thought any less of by the audience because I'm a, I'm a girl. I'm not sure if it's because Trisver is starting to more and more uh, yeah. uh, create a rumor that it's it's uh, it's okay it's not uh, it's not dangerous <laughs> with a girl <laughs> with a girl on stage yeah, um, yeah. So, um, uh, but but yeah there are there there is uh, there are a lot of, of prejudice uh, still but um but um i don't feel that it's a problem and uh, also that it's becoming more and more normal and absolutely accepted that women can really knock your socks off <laughs> uh, in metal too. Yeah, I mean, recently, um, Elisa from Arch Enemy spoke about how um, a woman, woman's authenticity tends to be judged, but she also mentioned how um, it's a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because you get judged, but it's a bad thing because you can prove that, you know, I can go up on stage and I can, you know, be awesome mm. and I can look really good at the same time. Do you agree with that? Mm. Yeah, it sounds that's a cool, uh, cool description indeed. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's um, uh, yeah, of, of course. If, if they uh, if understood parts uh, correctly, it's like that they, they maybe they underest underestimate you in advance, but then you go on stage and you really show them how deadly wrong they are. They were to. Think that this uh, would be bad, so um, so you um, you also have sometimes the element of surprise if people, yeah. especially if you think about Arch Enemy, if they think that that's not going to be awesome, then they're in for a surprise. <laughs> that yeah. is really uh, that's really something, and uh, and I think also uh, at least I feel that um, that Angela Agosso uh, have really. Um, really made a big difference because uh, she, one thing is uh, the talent she uh, and absolutely also Lisa has vocal wise, yeah. but uh, it's the stage presence. Mm -hmm. uh, I had seen Alyssa a bit and she looks completely awesome, but Angela, we toured with Arch Enemy in 2009 yeah. and uh, uh, I am. Uh, she, she, she as a stage person. Oh my God! She <laughs> demanded the whole room. Yeah. So um, it's it's something about that too to really really show that uh, we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there we, we can we can do every bit the same as guys and probably even more because yeah. we maybe often want it so much more uh, due to. Yeah, due to the fact that uh, subconsciously, at least, I think we all think that we have to we have to prove a bit extra, even though we maybe not have to. Yeah. But yeah. 
So um, there are some exceptional women in the metal scene, like you mentioned, Angela, Simone Simons, Elisa, mm-hmm. you know, many others. So, you know, yes. however, these women have only emerged over, say, the last decade, you know. Mm-hmm. Who did you take inspiration from when you decided, you know, back when you started, it was probably even more orthodox to see a, a female in the metal scene. So where did you get your um, motivation from to say, no, I'm a w- woman and I'm going to do it? Yeah, well, first of all, I, I've, I've, uh, I've never paid attention to what's normal and accepted and, and anything. I've just, I've always done what I've wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and also the, uh, the metal environment in that small town I grew up in, they never judged because uh, I was a, a girl. Uh, maybe because I just... I took it so much for granted that, yeah, I'm, I'm also playing uh, metal. I'm also starting a band. I'm going to be a leading uh, leading singer or I'm going to be the bassist or yeah. whatever. The, it's um, It was uh, never uh, any judgment from uh, the, the guys in the metal environment uh, where I grew up. Uh, and um, all positive, we all always believed in uh, what we could do and who we were. Um, uh, I always believe that uh, I, I could play whatever music I want, be have who, whatever position in the band I wanted if I just worked enough to yeah. be good at it. Uh, but of course, um, uh, 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 of course, Doro Pesh, you, you cannot not mention her. Uh, she is absolutely mm-hmm. uh, really important. Uh, I would say for for anyone and any female doing metal because she's also been really true to everything she wanted. She's been going on for is it more than thirty years now? Uh, yeah, yeah, at least for a long time. Yeah, uh, and uh, I've seen her live. She's a true true inspiration to watch live because she she's uh, she she's so she's so true. She really loves this. She loves the audience. She's um, um, passionate. Yeah. You, Yes, really, really, and and that's always very inspiring. Yeah. Um, but that must also be said uh, when it comes to to strict inspirations. There is um, uh, an American all girls band called Phantom Blue. <laughs> <laughs> um, they um, they released the two albums in the eighties. Uh, they still exist, but uh, I think it's only the drummer of the original members who's left, oh, okay. who's still playing. <laughs> Uh, but that they released two albums in the 80s, and those albums are really awesomely cool. And that's okay. all girls. They are shredding the guitars like nobody's business and playing the drums. And, uh, and the singer is also um, this really rough, hard rock uh, female singer with a lot of melody okay. in the voice, but still punch. Uh, and... Um, uh, re- that was really inspiring. I remember because I had the, up to that point, I um, before I heard them, I had not heard any old girls band who really played the good hard rock in the in the same advanced way as many of the other '80s hard rock okay. bands. So um, so that was absolutely also inspiring. But uh, but besides from that, uh, it's always been um, just cool bands seeing. Uh, going to concerts with really cool bands, good musicians, okay. have all, always been inspiring for me. Just that, okay, I want to achieve that. I want to be that good. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, um, just in general, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, that's very inspiring. And I, I hope a lot of women take inspiration from you and come out of their hole and decide, okay, I'm yes. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Bec- I'm going to do it because I'm a woman, you know, something yeah, like yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just b- believe in yourself and the only one who can put any restrictions on yourself is you. Yeah. So, mm. Okay, so coming back to the band, one of the things yeah. that helped you guys um, to, you know, take your music out there to the world, which you mentioned was um, touring with bands like Arch Enemy, um, Camelot, so, will we be hearing about any of those anytime soon? 
I hope so. Uh, we of course want to uh, to get out uh, on tour in Europe and very much hopefully also other continents um, with the heart of the matter. Uh, we don't have any tours confirmed, um, but we are uh, we we are working already and networking and uh, trying to uh, to figure out who is going on tour next year and. Uh, we okay. want to to jump in, but because we've always been, uh, um, we've at least tried to uh, to be a bit or quite conscious on what kind of artists we're going out with, okay. um, and uh, it's always worked very well, uh, even with Arch Enemy, uh, who we would think have a, a much more extreme audience. They uh, seem to also appreciate our music because yeah. the arch enemy yeah. music is quite melodic, even though they have these brutal vocals. Yeah. Um, and Camelot has also worked really well. Sonata Arctica was a fantastic tour. Okay. Uh, touring with Wasp has also worked brilliantly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, um, so at least we always try to be careful that we go out with a headlining act that we believe the audience, where where we believe the audience can appreciate also our music. Um, and of course, we hope also that we, with this album, can start to do some some headlining yeah. shows. Yeah, that well. was. I was going to so, ask you, when do you think you're going to start? When do you think that headlining is going to be? What you like? It's definitely what you guys want for trials. Yeah. So are you looking of course, for that? Absolutely. Uh, indeed. So um, it all depends a bit now on um, if the um, is equal to the actual response uh, we get in reviews. Yeah. So, um, so if we, uh, of course, if the if the actual demand from people out there to see tries for live will uh, will equal the, the very good um, uh, reviews and response on fa on Facebook <laughs> and stuff, uh, then it's likely that promoters will um, will be able to yeah. uh, to bring us in as headliners. So it's um it's a baby step process all the way. Yeah. Um, but we uh, we hope, and I personally believe that we can start doing at least some headlining shows. Yeah, um, it's about time. We, we, yes, it is. It is. <laughs> it's it's awesome to to travel around and support as well because it's much less pressure. <laughs> but um, but uh, we definitely uh, we we hope we can start to uh, to claim our position as a headlining act, and uh, because we do feel. Uh, that it's it is about time. Yes. Um, speaking of touring, I have to ask: Is India anywhere on your map? Uh, I I have thought about India several times because I've heard uh, from a few uh, bands who've been over there that it's it was really amazing to play there. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, but of course, it's um, it 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 sucks to say it, but it's all a matter of money to to have the finances to get over there and to actually arrange something. Um, but but of course, we it it would be awesome uh, for sure. So we're always looking at uh, at all kinds of possibilities. Um, and if there is a promoter or a festival uh, who will, in India who would like us to come, we will definitely do the best we can to make it happen. Yeah, I, I hope that happens very soon. Yeah, <laughs> that would be awesome, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lastly, Ida, I, you know, I would like to wish you best of luck for the album, of course, and hopes everything works out for you. I'm waiting to see a big poster with... Headlining act Triosphere written right up there. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. That will be really awesome to see uh, myself. <laughs> <laughs> but before I take leave, um, I need you to tell me what you think is the most appealing part of this album. You know, something that you want your fans to notice, appreciate, and then buy it, of course. And um, just give them all one line on why they should rush right now and catch the new album. I think I will have to paraphrase what a guy said once, is that this album has something for everyone. I think that is the sum up. It has something for everyone. 
no matter what kind of metal or what kind of intensity you like, you will find something you like on this album. Okay. And the dynamics is something you should notice, indeed. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ida. It was so nice talking to you, especially um, woman to woman. Uh, yes.